Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss different controllers used in the feedback, closed loop feedback system. So, uh, namely, we are going to go through P, PI, PD, PID controllers. That is proportional controller, proportional integrated integral controller, then proportional derivative controller and proportional integration derivative controllers. So, these are different controllers and their applications in the control system that we will be studying in this video. So, let us start with the controllers. So, now uh, introduction regarding the basics of systems. System an interconnection of elements and devices for a desired purpose is nothing but a system. What is a control system now? Control system, it is an interconnection of components forming a system configuration that will provide a desired response. Uh, figure shows one process which has few inputs and few outputs. Okay, so, what is a process now? Process, the device or a plant or a system under control is called as a process. The input and output relationship represents the cause and effect relationship of a process. So, what is going to happen here in process, uh, there will be change in input will be the cause in the uh, effect of the process that will be an output. So, as uh, change in the input will be responsible for process to give some de desired effect which is called as a output. Okay? So, this was regarding the system, control system and process. Now, uh, we will go through the types of control systems. Uh, generally, uh, commonly there are two types open loop control system and closed loop control system. What are the chain, uh, differences? Let us go through the differences of these two. Uh, the open loop control system utilizes a controller or a control actuator to obtain the desired response. As diagram shows, we will be having some desired output response to actuating device, which again uh, is connected with the process and will get an output from the process. So, we will be having a process uh, which, uh, which is run uh, due to uh, uh, or caused by some actuating devices and the process will give us an output. So, uh, we need a desired output response for the actuating the devices. In closed loop control system, it will a feedback to compare the actual output to the desired output response. So, here we are having a feedback loop. So, you can uh, go through the block diagram here. We are having three components now uh, comparator, then a controller, then process and again whatever output is coming from the process that is again uh, through measurement is fed back to a comparator. So, there again it is compared with the desired output response. Actual output uh, measured is again uh, compared with the desired output and uh, then whatever may be the uh, deviation that can be again uh, controlled through this closed loop control system. So, basically these are two different types. These are having their own advantages and disadvantages. We will go through those in uh, any time, any other time. Uh, multi variable control system, this is another type systems with more than one control loop are known as a multi input multi output MIMO or multi variable control systems. So, here we are having uh, more than one inputs to the controller and again process. So, different outputs will be there and those again are measured and paid back to the controller. So, it is also a closed loop system. Then next is intelligent control systems. Intelligent control is a class of control techniques that use various artificial intelligence computing approaches like neural networks or uh, Bayesian probability, fuzzy logic, machine learning, evolutionary computation and genetic algorithm. Okay, these are called as intelligent control systems. Requirement of a good control system. What are the different requirements uh, needed for a good control system? First is accuracy, obviously accuracy is a must. 
it defines the limits of the errors made when the instrument is used in normal operating conditions to increase accuracy of any control system error detector should be present in a control system okay so that is accuracy system must be more accurate then sensitivity a control system should be sensitive to input only so it must be high sensitive to the inputs so uh, the slightly change in the input must be noticed and accordingly output must be changed then noise a good control system should be able to reduce the noise effect so noise must be minimum for a good control system then bandwidth bandwidth should be large as possible as for frequency response for a good control system so large band bandwidth is a must and then speed obviously a good control system possesses high speed the response uh, response time must be very short the transient period for such system is very small okay then oscillations a small number of oscillation or a constant oscillation of output tend to system to be stable we need a stable system that is the requirement of the system now uh, we are going to go through um, main point of the video that is different controllers a controller is one which compares controlled values with the desired values and has a function to correct the deviation produced okay so basically what is a controller it will continuously uh, uh, control the error okay so basically uh, in closed loop system what we are going to do is the actual output is compared with the desired output continuously and whatever error is produced uh, that will be controlled by using the controllers the different types of controllers are proportional controller proportional derivative controller proportional integral controller and proportional integral derivative controller so p pd pi and pid controllers are the main point of this video for these four controllers will be studied in detail in later part so very first that is proportional controller in a proportional controller the output which is also called as the actuating or control signal is directly proportional to the error signal okay so we know uh, what is the error signal here uh, whatever the uh, come uh, difference between the actual output and the desired output it is called as a error signal and that error sig uh, so the controller is going to control the error signal okay so here the control signal is nothing but kp into error signal so kp is nothing but it is the proportionality constant here so as we uh, know the name of controller which is proportional controller so here the control signal will be always proportional to the error signal so to change the proportionality sign with the equality sign we need some proportionality constant here in this case it is kp so control signal will be equal to kp into error signal okay if the error signal is a voltage and the control signal is also a voltage then the proportional controller is just an amplifier so in simple words if both the signals so that is error signal and control signal if both the signals are same then uh, the proportional controller we just uh, amplify the value uh, or we can say it as a amplifier okay so diagram shows the uh, simple system in which again there is a desired state is fed through amplifier to a uh, control system and the output is that is feedback signal or measured state is again compared at the comparator and continuously the feedback is given and the error signal is uh, amplified in amplifier with the gain okay the properties of proportional controller in a proportional controller steady state error tends to depend inversely upon the proportional gain so if the gain is made larger the error goes down so here a steady state error is equal to 1 upon 1 plus kp into gain okay so the proportional controller helps in reducing the steady state error thus makes the system more stable 
So, a slow response of the over damped system can be made faster with the help of these controllers. Okay. And the shortcomings, proportional controller has the advantage of reducing down the steady state error of the system, but along with that it also has some serious disadvantages. Okay. So, basically one advantage is steady state errors are reduced in the proportional controllers but disadvantages are as mentioned due to the presence of controllers with some offset in the system. Proportional controllers also increase the maximum overshoot of the system. It directly amplifies process noise. So, it, there is these are the major three disadvantages. To avoid these errors and to make the controller more accurate and practical, we use the advanced and modified version of it known as proportional integral controller or proportional derivative controllers that is PI or PD controllers. So, the next one that is a proportional derivative controller that is PD controller. This kind of action gives an output which is proportional and derivative of the input that is proportional to the derivative or the rate of the change of the error. Derivative action could not be used alone in the practice. So, this is because its output is only related to the rate of change of error. The error could be huge, but if it were unchanging, the controller would not give any output. Thus, although it is theoretically possible, it is practically impossible. Derivative control is usually formed in the combination with the proportional control to form so called P plus D that is proportional plus derivative controller. So, here what happens is the uh, error will be proportional uh, to the input uh, sorry uh, the output will be proportional to the error signal error input signal and also it will be the derivative of the input signal uh, the same is the elaborated in the diagram block diagram also properties or advantages of a pd controller so here od will be equal to minus k d into d r by d t where uh, o d is output derivative controller, k d is derivative gain or action factor of the controller, d r is a deviation change over the time sample d t and the d t is again time sample. So, error signal a derivative of error signal that is d d t of e r will be multiplied with the derivative gain that will be our output. Okay. So, derivative part in the PD controller reduces the overshoot and improves the transient stability of the control system. It reduces the time constant of the system and thus making system faster. This has no effect on the steady state error that is derivative part and on the offset caused by the proportional controller. So, basically the main advantage of derivative controller is it will provide stability to the system. Then proportional integral that is PI controller, as the name suggests in integral controllers, the output also called as actuating signal is directly proportional to the integral of the error signal. Integral controllers used alongside with the proportional controller and called as a PI controllers. So, PI controller equation will become uh, CO will be equal to KC into uh, E plus 1 upon TI integration of E dt, here E is error signal again. So, diagram also shows the same thing, there are two controllers which are used in a parallel connection that is P and I. Uh, so, when the signal error signal goes to P and I, again uh, it is passed through a transfer function and we will get an output. Properties and advantages of a PI controller. Output is proportional to the integral of the input signal. As the integrator is involved, it increases the type of the system. Uh, as the type of the system increases, it reduces steady state error and has improved accuracy. Integral action enables PI controllers to eliminate offset, a major weak weakness of a P only controller. Thus, PI controllers provide a balance of complexity and capability that makes them by far the most widely used algorithm in process control applications. As the type of the system is in increased, 
there is some negative impact over the stability of the system okay so the pi controller reduces the steady state errors but again there is issue of stability of the system so the next controller by keeping in mind the advantages of both pi as well as pd and disadvantages of both pi as well as pd this next controller that is proportional integral derivative controller is used so pid control involves all the three controllers studied earlier that is p pd and pi connected in parallel so you can see here uh, the different uh, gains of the system is also shown there so p that is kp into error signal i i is again ki into integration of error signal dt and d that is derivative so kd into d dt of error signal so the all are summed together in this pid controller so pid control involves the parallel combination of these three controllers and the output equation is proportional to the derivative as well as integral of the error signal so you can see here the uh, u of t that is output signal will be equal to kp into e of t that is the proportional part plus ki into integration of uh, integration from 0 to d e tau d tau that is integral part and again plus kd into d dt of et that is derivative part so summation of all the three p as well as i as well as d controllers uh, will be equal to the output signal coming from the pid controller okay so this is a pid controller now the characteristics of p i and d controllers a proportional controller that is kp uh, will have the effect of reducing the rise time and will reduce but never eliminate the steady state error so in proportional there will be some steady state error present an integral controller that is have ki uh, will have the effect of eliminating the steady state error but it may make a transient response worse so the stability is an issue a derivative control that is KD will have the effect of increasing stability of the system, reducing the overshoot and improving the transient response. So in derivative control, stability is good. So all design specification can be reached with the PID controller and 100% desired condition can be achieved. So this is uh, mostly used or mostly desired uh, type of controller. So the 100% desired condi conditions can be achieved through this PID controller effect of increasing the individual gains what happens when we in, uh, increase the individual gains so here uh, the characteristics of p i and d controllers are shown mm, okay so what happens if the kp k and kd are increased uh, the different conditions are as we are going to increase the kp rise time is rise time is going to decrease overshoot will be increasing then setting time sorry settling time is uh, there where there will be small change and the steady state error will decrease okay for a p controller then for i controller uh, if ki increases rise time decreases overshoot increases settling time again increases and ss error is eliminated and for d controller if the kd increases rise time small change will be there overshoot decreases settling time again decreases and steady state error again there will be a small change so this is uh, the total characteristics in a tabulated form uh, tips for designing a pid controller so what do we need to do for designing a pid controller obtain an open loop response and determine what needs to be improved Add a proportional control to improve the rise time. Add a derivative control to improve the overshoot. Add an integral control to eliminate the steady state error. Adjust each of KP, KI and KD until you obtain a desired overall response. So we need to adjust these constants so we can get desired response. So this was regarding the controllers which we are going to use in a control system P controller then i controller d controller pi controller pd controller and lastly the pid controller so these are different types of controllers which we are going to use in a control system thank you